Hi everyone, welcome. Thanks so much for joining today. We had uh, a lot of interest in the session, which is really encouraging. We have registrations all the way from uh, Vancouver Island right across to Melbourne, Australia. Um, of course, uh, we're scheduled to start very early here in Europe and the afternoon in Australia. So a lot of people will join by watching the recording afterwards. I'm Razab Chaudhry from Lifelong Inspiration, and I have the pleasure of hosting um, a number of speakers today uh, who are going to take you on a journey. Uh, we're going to start with Dr. Pamela Topping, who's going to guide us through uh, use of color, use of color to as to create a therapeutic environment, to uh, make spaces which um, can be really places where you feel lost, uh, uh, much more welcoming, alive, familiar. Um, she's going to hand over to Sharon Topping, who is going to guide us through how she uses murals to help people with place finding. So from being a non-place to being something which is familiar to you in terms of time and in terms of place um, where you feel at home, you begin to feel at home in the public spaces, in the semi-public spaces. Amanda Crook from Kuliba Aged Care will then uh, reflect on the experience at Kuliba uh, of the staff and the residents um, you having experienced Sharon's murals. And then Amanda will pass over to me and I'll touch on a, a very familiar story for I think quite a few people, uh, the story of true doors, how we're using door decals to help personalize um, the entrances to spaces in nursing homes. Okay. Now, it's quite easy to get caught up in a lot of the details uh, of this flow. So I wanted to start by just saying, actually, in essence, what we're talking about is how do we create that real feeling of home for people, uh, a place where people feel comfortable, where people feel safe, where people feel welcome, where they can just be who they are any moment. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I should say more than that. I'm going to hand over to Pamela, if I may, and ask you to pick up the thread, if that's OK. Absolutely. So. Good morning, everybody, and hello from Belfast here in Northern Ireland. My name is Pamela Topping, and I'm the director of ColorWired. So what ColorWired does, it specializes in design for dementia. I began my career as a nurse many years ago and then jumped ship to design. So I began to notice there was a gap in design for dementia, and that's when my specialism began and designing for healthcare. So hopefully today I'll give you a little glimpse into some of my research and some of my work and what I base it on. So basically it's my work and my perspective into design for dementia is based on nature because we're surrounded by nature every day. We're surrounded by color and we're surrounded by light. So next slide, please. So, this is colour and I was first introduced to colour when I was four and I have distinct memories of visiting my grandmother who had painted the front of her house, including her front door, pink. So the same colour of pink is on the back of this slide. And being an only child, I was kind of left to my own devices at, at times and I happened to wander right into her yard and I found the tin of pink, pink paint and the paintbrush and being bored and finding myself in a space that was very dark and very dull and just a, a wall space, a yard with tiles, black tiles. Um, I decided at four that I would brighten the place up and I would bring a bit of joy to it. So with the pink brush, I proceeded to put a mark in every tile in the yard. So not only was it creating colour, but it was creating pattern. Um, through my eyes at four, I was bringing joy and harmony to a very dull space. So that was my the beginning of my journey with colour from when I was a very young child, and it stayed with me throughout my life. So moving on to the next slide. Um, so 
Color is a phenomenon. Color doesn't exist unless you have light. So this slide represents light. And you can see here the sunflowers growing towards the sun. And the sun is vitally important in dementia design for vitamin D. So it's really, really important to be outside. John Muir, if anybody has heard of John Muir, is a, was an ecologist and an environmentalist and a philosopher and has written many books for any of you that are, are, are interested in outdoor spaces. And he had a quote that stated that by going outside, you were really going in. And what he meant by that was whenever you were going outside, you were really going inside and into your own being um, and knowing who you were as a person whenever you were out and surrounded by nature. So by going outside, you're really going in. So really, really important for mental health. Um, so through the sunlight, we have the circadian rhythm. So the circadian rhythm is the natural pattern of the sun, the natural pattern of daylight. It's like um, many laws of the universe, the sun rises in the morning and sets at night. And that can be replicated through biodynamic lighting, which is LED lighting, which can be installed very simply in care homes and care facilities to regulate your circadian rhythm and keep you in that natural pattern of when you wake and when you go to bed. So next slide, please. So moving on to um, the principles, and this is a very quick overview of the very basics of, of design and, and really where you should begin. So the principles within spatial design are number one, the site. You have to know where the site is. Is it, is it rural? Is it urban? Um, who is it for? Who are you designing for? Is it is it a village? Is it a, you know a five story block? Is it uh, individual houses? Or is it terraced houses? So who are you designing for? And it's imperative that you identify that in the early stage and know who you're designing for and where the location is, where the site is, and very very and most important, what is the culture of that place? So it's all about place making. Number two, is it north or south facing? So where, where is your site? Is it facing the sun? Is it facing uh, the north? Is it a darker side? Is it facing a road? Is it facing a motorway? Is it, you know, facing green spaces? So is it north or south facing? And you want to identify that to let you know where the light is. So what is the scale? You know, how big is it? Is it, is it tall? Is it, you know, is it one story? Um, is it designed for 20 residents or is it designed for 200 residents? So residents. So what is the scale of the building? And then moving on to symmetry. So is there symmetry in the space? Can it be replicated? Are there a lot of curves in the space? So again, what does the design and what does the, the site allow you to design with and what parameters are there? How does the flow work throughout the space? So this is really necessity things, really critical things at the beginning at the planning stage of, of your building for dementia. What is the flow? How do you get from A to B? And what is the proportion of the rooms? So um, are they beside each other? Are they close together? How are you going to identify wayfinding? How are you going to identify colour? And importantly, where is the light? So all of these things are vitally important at the very, very beginning. So next slide, please. So moving on to elements. So we've talked about the principles, the basic principles, and now we're going to talk about the elements. So the elements is what makes up the space, the aesthetics of the space. And there are about six elements that are very necessary whenever you're designing a space in spatial design. And the first one is light obviously light. So are we north facing? Are we south facing? What is the brightness like, brightness like in the building? And the second point is colour. How do you introduce colour? How do you do, and I identify what each space is for? Is it a dining room? Is it a room for physiotherapy? Is it a room for yoga? Is it a library room? Is it a reminiscence room? Is it a day room? So how do you um, bring colour? Um, that is relevant into that space, bearing in mind that you're identifying and you're designing within the culture of the space. 
So moving on from that, then we have contrast, and we've all heard contrast and how important contrast is. And contrast is vitally important, but sometimes people, people can design very literally if they think, right, it has to be contrast. So one particular um, care facility that I based my research on took the contrast to the extreme and everything in this particular nursing home was, was either cream or red. So either the walls were cream and the seating and everything else was red or else the walls were red and everything else was cream. So, I mean, it was a very, uh, a, a very bland space, um, a very dull space um, to well in. So be mindful of when you're using colour and, and how you're using contrast and going back to your principles, think of the proportion. So after contrast, then we have pattern and it's people talk a lot about pattern and how pattern is very contradictory and can be um, confusing for people with dementia. And yes, it can, especially if you have a, an overload of pattern. But, you know, if you take and eliminate everything out of the space, no pattern, no pictures, you know, no nothing, no, no texture. Well, then it's a very institutionalized space. So as designers, as managers, as care home directors and owners, or if you're coming from a, a nursing perspective background or a healthcare physios and OTs, um, do be mindful, do, do be aware that some pattern is necessary and some pattern is good. After all, if you relate back to nature, we're absolutely um, saturated in pattern and texture as well. So, and contrast, as you can see in this image here, we have a very vibrant blue, and then we have a very vibrant green, sometimes a darker green, and then sometimes you can see the, the earth. Um, so, so, you know, it all comes from nature. And to say you can eliminate that and only do, you know, have one color or two colors to write a building, in my perspective, and from my research, which is evidence-based research, is, is nonsense really. Um, so uh, the next element then would be texture. And again, you can see from nature, you go walk in the park, you can see the texture in leaves. Some leaves have like a furry surface. Some leaves can be rough and prickly. Here in Ireland, we have a lot of linen, we have a lot of wool, and sometimes wool can be itchy and scratchy. And so can linen. So, you know, and that's important too. Not everything has to be smooth and, and nice. Um, it's, it's replicating basically um, normal living and bringing the texture into the space, whether or not that's through furnishings, whether or not that's through um, if you're transitioning from an indoor space to an outdoor space, you might be transitioning from, a, you know, beautifully painted space or space with tiles or wallpaper and then going outdoors, which could be a stone wall. It could be a brick wall, could be a wooden fence, picket fence. So be mindful of the of texture, both inside and outside. And as you're transitioning from one space to another space, be mindful of texture. And ultimately, the last element and what you are, what is your goal is um, to create harmony, to bring joy into the space, you know, to bring happiness into the space, to bring pleasure into the space. Whenever you look at some of the images with true doors and you see the examples of a very clinical space with beige walls, beige doors, beige floors, beige ceilings, and you look at the transformation, it's such an uplifting space and makes such a difference. So ultimately, you're designing for harmony and joy. So next slide, please. So layers. So again, layers, you can see in this image, you can see in this rose, all these flowers, by the way, were growing in my garden. Some of them are wildflowers, some of them are roses. There are many. Um, but you can see from the image of this rose, you can see the inside of the rose, you can see the rain on the rose, you can see how those, those colours and those textures within that picture of that rose can be um, interpreted and translated into the, the interior space of a building. You know, that might be through 
velvet, it might be through silk, it might be through satin, it might be through whatever color is on the floor, whether it's vinyl, whether it's wood. So all these elements that we've discussed and all these principles that we've discussed are then translated in the layers. And when you're designing a space, ultimately you're building, it's like building a palette. So you're bringing in layers and layers and layers and layers. So layering the floor, layering the walls, layering the layering the, the doors, what's on the door, layering um, the furnishings, layering the lighting, you know, is there ambient lighting? Is there task lighting? So all of those things within the space make up in design, which we call, it's a German word, it's called Gesamtumspark. And that means a total work of art. So really what you're doing, that is what you're trying to create within a space. It's a, it's a total work, work of art. And within that total work of art, you're including tactile elements, you're including sensual elements, and ultimately natural materials, and ultimately comfort. So next slide, please. So um, this slide and the, the, the slide after this are just really a very quick snapshot into my research whenever I was um, doing my, my doctorate. And this is uh, seven um, color palettes. I put the palettes inside a house because I thought it was the best way to explain it. I'll not go into it in a lot of detail, but the question, as you can see, is can color as an experiential element and form a design lexicon for decision makers in dementia friendly dwellings? And all of the research that these are each house was true in Belfast, the Hogway in Amsterdam, um, and then the remainder were towns or cities in Northern Ireland. And you can see from most of them, whenever the, the, the color was analyzed and, and the an analysis was done through software program, that the overarching um, color that emerged from all of them was cream or beige or vanilla. And you can see from the, the house, the palette that's Lisburn, that was designed very much from trends. And I would recommend do not design from trends. Trends come and trends go. And that particular care facility in Lisbon was designed around beige, um, black or brown leather sofas and, you know, cream walls. So the one beside it, Antrim, it was designed as well from trends and the trends at that time was purple. So everything in it was purple or lilac. So I would avoid trends because they become dated. You know, you'll find in a year's time that, that you know, relatives will pick up their data. So always try and design from place, placemaking, and from the culture, from your location and your site. So next slide, please. So um, this was towards the end of my research and the title of that um, conference was to what extent, extent does evidence-based findings, design principles, and arbitrary choices inform color and design spaces? And if you kind of look at the band in the middle, there's a word cloud there in the middle. And whenever all the research emerged out of um, NVivo, which was the software program for uh, quantitative and qualitative research, um, out of all the colors that were sampled and put in, which were, there were hundreds and hundreds, um, it emerged that cream was the dominant color that was used in design. And um, all those words in that word cloud, you can, if you kind of look in closely, you can see where they, they all came from, whether it was chairs, the ceiling, wood, corridors, that's where, you know, that's where cream and beige was found. So next slide, please. So really, I'd like to just sum up. And um, the last slide was just the invitation to the webinar today. Don't know, it's maybe got lost, disappeared in the ether. But um, it was just to um, thank Razid from True Doors and to thank Sharon from the Mural Shop for inviting me today to speak to you very briefly, a really quick snapshot of design um, for dementia and the fundamentals that are essential at the, at the beginning of your journey when you're designing and to be mindful of what you need to include. This is really reflected through True Doors and through the mural shop. And um, ultimately the goal is bringing joy 
bringing happiness, bringing color, bringing zest into your life, bringing zest into the relatives' lives and the carers' lives, the nurses' lives, and most importantly, the residents' lives. So thank you for listening. I'd like to hand over to Sharon. Thank you. Thanks very much. That was that was amazing. It really was. And uh, yes, I totally believe in everything you're saying and, and try to live up to this. All right. Um, so strengths-based um, dementia design nine ways um, to create positive stimulation. And there's an artwork by me years ago on a nice little take on Munch's screen. Next slide, please, Razib. Okay, so why have I created these mirror products that you are about to see? Well, ever since I was a child, I've wondered what art is and what art does, which is weird, right? But as a dyslexic thinker, my superpower is visual problem solving and looking at ideas from a broader perspective. And as such, I became a graphic designer, illustrator, artist, interior decorator and color psychologist with a wicking certificate in understanding dementia. And I went from working in advertising to solving interior decorating problems with artful finishes for residential, corporate and aged care facilities. Meanwhile, the demand to bring back the age old importance of art in architecture led me to create murals and unique art finishes for points of difference in the buildings where people work and live. Now, my work for aged care began in 2008 at a Queensland Health Memory Support Unit visually transforming a kitchen nook into a cafe by pragmatically applying the trompe l'oeil technique. And from this point, I learned what art does for aged care. Art is the expression of design, architecture, soul and culture, and life without art feels coldly commercial. People need connections to art's warmth, colour and textures. So art delivers in meaningful, minimalist ways for a sense of completeness. The nine mural ideas that you're about to see use best practices in dementia design and color psychology to help aged care organizations transform a facility into a home. I've enjoyed creating these challenges uh, as dementia friendly enhancements so that people no longer have to live feeling locked in and without color. Next slide, please. Resident room door wraps aid wayfinding and stop wrong room door entering, arguments and embarrassment. I've used room door wraps for my Wesley Mission project to help me turn their foyer's interior design inside out. In this way, residents who live for their bus trips out would already feel like they are out and about, which reduce their stress and minimize their risk of depression. And so people here no longer try to get into the office looking entry door choosing instead to sit and nap on their new inner city park bench. Next slide. Door disguises will stop exit door stress and provide a reminiscent view out. Amanda and her team at Coolabar Aged Care have installed three door disguise projects with us and just approved a bus stop. Over the years, through lots of experiences on what gets results, I've developed a unique take on exit door disguise, including I want residents to feel okay that they can see there, but not go there. And then to create a sense of freshness and natural imagery relevant to your location. Greens with lots of warm colors provide contrast for better wayfinding. I adhere to highly luminous contrasting colors, for instance, the 70 percentile difference, or I just use a squint test. I use cues to engage residents' reminiscence through objects, animals, scenery, pastimes, and plants and then style these cues relevant to the interior decor and architectural style. I do not believe in bookshelf decals or scenes with any framework for safety. And lastly, I will design very closely to door frames, seams, shadows, handles, keypads, etc. If I want people to stay away from a space, I'll position an animal such as a kookaburra, seagull or galah close to it. And then voila, no more punching at keypads, or trying door handles. Now, depending on the door architecture, we can camouflage the door handle and or create an illusion of height. See there, but not go there. Coolabar Aged Care loved their murals because residents would appreciate the views and then turning around and happily walking away from their exit doors. The murals gave staff their time back 
while transforming the commercial appearance into more home-like vibes. Next slide, please. Cupboard door disguises will stop items from being raided and dispersed while adding a garden or beach huts or art gallery theme. As per the Eden philosophy, we want to help elders take their lives back and get yours back too by empowering you to disrupt their loneliness, helplessness and boredom. People with dementia know common courtesy, i.e. that locked beach hut doors are not their property to enter, but they can appreciate their meaningful colour, texture and outdoor vibe. So in this way, we achieve person-directed care that upholds a resident's right to choose for oneself. Next slide. Or we can do cupboard door disguises as an art gallery. And in case you're wondering, yep, I've done all of these artworks. Now regarding printing and laminating, our door wraps are UV repellent, bioretardant, and low VAC, medical grade, anti-mold, mildew, fungal, and bacterial grade. Next slide, please. Ceiling murals will give dining rooms elegant, atmospheric awe. Similarly, you can place them above beds for a beautiful, soothing focal point. Ceiling murals invite the outside in to empower a person to appreciate and wonder at its light, space and beauty. If needed, we can organise professional installation Australia-wide for any of our products. Next one. Nurses station disguises will transform windows and receptions into out and about spaces. They can stop staff harassment and give them time to focus, simultaneously making residents feel happier and reducing their stress. Ideas like fish tanks or beautiful nature artworks create opportunities to imbue illusions of space and warmth, meaningful colours against typically large, bare, neutral backgrounds. And so in this way, we create low footprint designs that economically declutters environments and aids wayfinding. All of our disguises work because they suggest I can see there but not go there. And they can be interactive with carefully positioned animals as dementia-friendly connections to nature. We position, in, position them in ways that are non-threatening, such as at a distance or behind glass. Next slide. Windows out declutter long hallways and living areas while inviting the outside in. By swapping numerous small, expensive glass frame prints with custom imagery printed onto installation-friendly traditional wallpaper, inclusive of frames or mouldings relevant to your decor, facilities can create out and about vibes that can't be smashed or moved. At St Vincent's, bringing the view from its actual window into the space will create a new conservatorium as a quiet spot for a lovely cup of tea. Next slide. And now we have outdoor murals that help solve problems caused by uninviting interiors and garden spaces where residents go to find escape. Instead, an illusion of space and or a meaningful focal point relevant to the facility's location brings the beauty of colour and an opportunity for reminiscence. Outdoor murals are UV printed and delivered ready to hang on large aluminium panels. Next, please right there. Bus stops transform your oversized impersonal hallways and wasted space nooks into delightful places of escape. They create fun themes and opportunities for commemoration with free donor attribution applied to our bus stop street signs, plaque and bench seat. Residents like to pat our smiling cattle dog, Eddie. There's a bit of interaction. Next slide. And lastly, Coming soon in 2023 are glass mosaic rugs for layering Pamela, which I believe are the missing link between facility and home-like design because real homes zone their spaces with rugs. Sadly, in aged care, a carpet is a trip hazard and yet they imbue colour, texture, style and comfort. I've been looking for an easy clean rug solution for a long time. And glass mosaic tiles are robotically engineered, molded, not cut, which feels softer underfoot. 
This is a feature that you build in flush with the floor, so it's non-trip. Mosaic rugs are treated with a matte sealant for non-shiny, non-slip walking. Now, since the Australian Royal Commission into Aged Care's findings and the government's backing of them, our strengths-based dementia-friendly products have been in demand. Currently, we're working with branches of Art Care, Opal, Southern Cross, Coolabar, Queensland Health, St Basil's, St Vincent's, Regis, and today, CPSN Care booked one of my free on-site assessments in Brisbane. The Royal Commission and NCC 22 National Construction Code have both focused on improving energy efficiency and livability. At the Mill Shop, we aim to help aged care providers save their staff time, relieve everyone's stress, improve wayfinding, exit diversion, and livability. By incorporating minimalist and yet meaningful colors and themes, you can transform facilities into more genuine, homelike environments. And that's it for me. Thank you, everybody. And I'll hand it back over to you now, Razev. Thanks. Thanks so much, Sharon. That was great. Just uh, uh, hi, Amanda. Can I ask you to uh, share your feedback? I'm going to go back to the slide, which I think was the second example. Oh no, the third. Oh no, that's right. Is that right, Amanda? That one there. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yep, that's it. All right, thanks everybody um, for joining and thank you for the opportunity to share our experience. Um, we, Coolabar is a 136 bedded aged care facility in Mandurah, WA, and we're built on the traditional land of the Banjarat people, of whom I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging today. Our home has 136 beds separated into four houses. Um, two of which are memory support houses that have secure entrances to keep our residents who are at risk of wandering um, safely in that environment. About 12 months ago, we started on a journey of um, working with Sharon to try and solve some of the challenges that we were facing um, within the facility. And the challenges that we um, were facing um, partly stemmed from the completion of a new build. So we completed a 20 bed extension to the home and um, that resulted in us restructuring our current houses um, into um, new houses. And that resulted in some dead end doors or doors that were dividing the um, previous spaces that needed to remain in place, but they were not operational as doors moving forward. We know that from past experience that we'd had a number of residents over the years that had become quite fixated on doors and handles. And we wanted to try and eliminate the stress and the trigger for them wherever possible to improve their environment. The space had um, almost become a little bit uh, more clinical feeling on completion of the build. It's lovely, um, as Pamela talked about, to have you know, shiny, clean new walls, but the, the clinical feeling and the institutionalization that that um, brings can be um, quite negative to residents living in that space. And so we were conscious of the benefits of bringing in some color, having some interest, having some visual stimulation. And we really were looking for ways to achieve this. We had implemented some solutions previously, including some artwork um, and had limited success in some of these things, really predominantly around um, maintaining the cleanliness of them and the infection control associated with them and also the safety of residents. So um, artwork being removed off walls and, um, you know, uh, damaged was something that we were trying to avoid to ensure we kept everybody safe. So we embarked on a little bit of research um, and decided we really wanted to focus on our exit doors and the doors that were sort of non-operational but still living in the space. And we came across um, Sharon and the work that she'd been doing um, and were really impressed with her knowledge of the dementia area, um, which gave us the confidence to progress forward. So we started to work with Sharon to give us some designs for some of our doors and to measure some of our doors up. And then we then looked um, at how we were going to fund this. So um, unfortunately, aged care has never got a um, million dollars in the bank to spend on everything we would like to spend. So we decided to actually reach out to our key stakeholders. So these were people who, some of whom were large suppliers to us as an organization. 
some of them were relatives of um, residents. And we asked them to sponsor a door, um, transform a door and sponsor a door. Um, within an hour of sending out those emails, we actually had six people respond and um, say that they were happy to sponsor a door. And we've really stuck with that method. So every door that we have done has been sponsored by um, a supplier or a family. And we have little um, plaques next to those um, to recognize those people. So I think we're now up to about six or seven doors. Some doors have got um, murals on both sides. Other doors are just one-sided, dependent upon the space. Um, and what have we seen as a result? Well, everything we set out to achieve and more really. Firstly, or firstly um, beautiful artwork, obviously, that are really um, appealing to look at. We have um, relatives, um, staff, um, new staff, comment on our doors um, repeatedly week in, week out um, at just how nice they look and how visually appealing they are. We've certainly got um, less residents being focused on the doors. So what tends to happen is the resident will see um, the picture on the door from a distance. Um, most of them in our memory support area have a, um, a barrier of some description, so a fence or something that makes people perceive that they don't want to, they, they can't go any further. And people will um, approach that space, they will look at the picture and they'll turn around and um, continue on their path in a different direction. They've also been great conversation starters. So um, where residents may become agitated and they then start to look at a picture, they've been a great way of our staff and our relatives actually conversing with um, residents in a little bit of reminiscence therapy and starting to talk about, you know, did you have a dog and what was your dog's name and whatever the picture is, is helping them to actually reminisce about. Um, when we set out to do our project, we didn't specifically um, think that we would utilize these from way, a wayfinding perspective because they really were quite a lot of dead end type doors. However, some residents are using them for wayfinding. So um, they know that if they're in the corridor with the dog, they're not in the right corridor and they need to find the corridor where the flower is or whatever it might be. So that has been a benefit that we really didn't anticipate. Um, the process has been really, really great to deal with Sharon. Um, we we've certainly are really pleased with where we've got to. The more recent um, uh, murals that we've had our internal painter and decorator has actually put those up um, and they've been really easy to hang from a commercial wallpaper type method um, and as you heard we've just signed up for a bus stop so we've found a space that um, we feel is a little bit sad in one of our wings and um, we are building a mural with Sharon now to have a bus stop and a bench for people to stop and relax so yeah, all up, our reflections are, it's been really positive. Um, they've had some really good feedback. Um, and yeah, they've, they've certainly brought some color into our space in a safe and effective way. Back over to you, Razeb. Thanks so much, Amanda. That was really clear and you made it, the, your narrative is so vivid. Thank you. Just gonna skip forward to the next set of slides. So, I have uh, a dual ha hat today, as well as hosting. Uh, I'm also telling the Trudeau story. And I've told this story many times over the last nine or so years. And it turns out that this video is much better than me. So here we go. Uh, actually started out as a one-off art project that I was working on along with my friend and now colleague Marika who you saw applying the decal in that short film and we wanted to 
take pictures of people's front doors before they move to a care home and uh, make a short film or book, we weren't sure, um, about their life story, the story behind the door. And while we were, we were very fortunate to have the chance to do this at a care home in Tilburg here in the south of the Netherlands, we had a, a moment where we realized that actually in the memory care space, uh, this idea might have more significance. Um, we did a follow-up project where we ended up driving around the Netherlands, taking pictures of people's front doors and um, making a little short list with, with the help of family, uh, elders chose their doors. And this is actually, this series of pictures is um, a pivotal moment in the project where we actually began to think of it more seriously when we actually noticed what was happening when people saw their doors. Um, they began to tell stories about their past. You could visibly see them becoming more cheerful and relaxed. Um, so then we did, we, were, we pushed forward and we did follow up projects and we then had the Trimbos Institute research one follow up project the next year. So we started in 2014, this was in 2015. And they found all and more of the benefits um, as described in that short video in this report, which you can download from our site. And this really brought us to the attention of the, the sector here in the Netherlands, and we started to get more interest rather than chasing other after people kind of tenaciously. And um, we started to do more projects. And then a year later, we were covered by a social media news site called Board Panda. And then suddenly, literally the next day, we started to get, get queries from all over the world uh, that didn't lead to projects quite like that, you know, we had to go through all the hoops of, you know, the fire standards and understanding the conditions in different countries and what type of material would work. But once we went through those hoops and we found local partners like Sharon, who were great to work with, uh, we began to do projects first in Europe, 2016 and 17, and then in Australia, US and Canada from 2017, 2018 onwards. And from the outset, we've taken a very much person-centered approach to projects. So we've been encouraging people to support the elders in choosing their own door. So here I'm very quickly going to go through a lot of slides, but just to explain how that works. So from the outset, you hear, you see here at Glacier View Lodge, which is on Vancouver Island in Canada. They involve the resident and family council in the project. And they had a very clear set of goals. They wanted to create a home-like environment. They wanted to create a sense of security, safety, and they wanted to use the project to build relationships. They made short lists and where an elder wasn't able to make a choice themselves, they solicited help from the family. And then they made their choices, the decals were delivered, and they began the application process. And here you just see the different areas and all the expressions of character that come out through the choices that people have made. You can see, you know, just how lively, vivid, friendly an environment can become. And what I like very much about this picture is that when we started out, we were thinking this is a reminiscence tool. People will pick doors that where they'd lived. And what we've seen more often is that actually people, of course, still have aspirations and uh, they, sometimes they express their aspirations through the doors that they choose. And I, I find that really uh, very heartwarming. So more doors and a thank you. So that was it, very, very kind of global and quick overview of the idea, its history, and how we've gone about doing the projects. You can go to the community section on trudors.com and you'll see different project descriptions. So you see quotes from people, pictures, videos to give you a sense of the transformations 
have taken place and in the research section alongside the Trimbos report there's also a, a short report which summarizes the research insights from the last 35 years which has have described the benefits for people with dementia uh, by personalizing the interiors at nursing homes. All right, I'm going to stop sharing the screen uh, and unpin myself and ask that, say that we open up for questions. Let's see, oh yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I can see the one question that came in very early when Amanda was uh, sharing her insight. Oh, somebody is linking to, oh, the word Gesamtkunstwerk. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Klaus. <laughs> um, if there are any questions, you can, you can open your mic and ask them if you feel confident that the sound is okay, or use the Q&A feature. Klaus, he's my coach. <laughs> Hi, Klaus. Fantastic dedication. <laughs> I think there's a question coming. I can see that you can open your mic if you like, Klaus. Oh. Okay, so Nicole, Nicole Clark is an interior designer here in Brisbane. Um, she's been doing some work for St. Vincent's Aged Care. Um, I'm to hear aspirational door choice. That was nice. Thank you, yeah. Nicole. Thank you. All right. Then I'm going to thank everyone for joining today and thank everyone that watches recording afterwards. Uh, Pamela, thanks so much. I, I, uh, I really learned a lot, actually. <laughs> it's a new perspective for me. Uh, Thank you. I, I probably said uh, pronounced Gesundheitswerk wrong, but yeah, hopefully people will kind of get the gist of its meaning and, and understand that it's a total work of art. So it's it's everybody's contribution and, and how the, the environment is, is built up through layers. And, you know, it just doesn't happen. That's why people design from trends and they think, well, we'll put some cushions here or we'll stick a picture on the wall. And, you know, there is information out there that talks about pictures have to be so many metres up from the ground, they have to be a certain size. And here in Ireland, we're all very passionate about Irish art. And I can tell you, that would never work. You know, my mother would have maybe 100 pictures on her walls in her living room. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so uh, and not all valuable, some Irish art, yeah, but others, prints or things that she's bought at sales. Um, so, yeah, it's it's all about um, the, the the total work of art and um, putting it all together. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's uh, fantastic. What, what I also take from this idea is that you're talking about co-creation, you're talking about seeing people's perspectives um, as equal, and those details are so important for what works for each each resident that lives at a home, and that's co-creation, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think, you know, what you're doing, what Sharon's doing is fantastic. I think, you know, you can see how it relates to the culture, you can see how it relates to placemaking, you can see how it relates to identity, and reminiscence as Sharon mentions fantastic and um yeah all of it I think uh, connects beautifully together and, and the dots all add up perfectly so yeah so yeah. thank you for uh, inviting me to be part of it today I learned a lot oh, I think we learned a lot from you and thank you too Amanda for your very kind words um I'm really honored there that you know the experience has been so positive mm -hmm. for you and that you're getting Sounds like daily, weekly um, yep. expression yep. of appreciation and, and results, you know, that that's that's where it's at. Because um, uh, as an artist, I could probably be doing gallery work and uh, being a mozza, but instead I, I want to um, do practical art and put it to some use and, you know, do some good out there not just art for art's sake and so that's a lot of what my journey is has been about 
but you know it takes clients like yourselves to uh <laughs> to help me get there so yeah thank you thank you very yes, much Amanda, it, it was wonderful to see the examples that you showed absolutely amazing to see Sharon's work come to life and um, it just transformed the spaces so great to see really enjoyed it and, and would really support it so thank you thank you thank you all right, so if anyone would, if anyone has a particular problem in an aged care facility with, you know, certain behaviorisms, feel free to reach out for, to me. Sometimes I've had facility managers who perhaps have a photographic um, decal over an exit door. For instance, at Regis years ago, um, a facility manager had a green field of grass and there was a gentleman who was weeing on it all the time. And she thought that, oh, it's because of the color green, not realizing that it was actually because there was nothing there to say that he couldn't. And so it's, it's a lot of it is about the psychology of the image and simple um, social cues to direct a person to make a decision for themselves as, as to what they could or shouldn't do. So um, my email is Sharon with two hours at the mural shop. Um, happy to answer any questions. Okay, Hi. cheers. Got a, uh, a number of just thank you comments, which are very welcome. Thanks so much, everyone. A question from Karen Haynes who asks, we have a bus stop in our facility and was recommended to get rid of it as it could be humiliating waiting and waiting do you find bus stops helpful well what's the alternative walking around um, beige corridors wondering you know where to go um i would rather have hope wouldn't you i think that you can that it's it's easy to emphasize with with other humans i would rather have a place to sit Okay, the bus, just like any other bus out there, it's not here yet. I might go off and I'll come back. Maybe it'll come then. I think as well, we've we've not installed ours yet, Karen, but um, we're, we're certainly moving down that route. We have put a little bit of a sort of temporary one up in terms of we have a lot of um, residents ask, when's the bus coming? Um, or where do I go to catch the bus? Or where's the taxi rank? Um, not knowing where to go for those things seems to be the source of the agitation. So when they know that the bus stop is there and if they want to catch the bus, they've got somewhere to go, it doesn't tend to be that they then go and sit there for hours upon end. It tends to be they just want to know where to go and where it is. They may then sit there, but very quickly that, um, that desire tends to pass and they tend to then move on to something else. It obviously depends on your residence and the level of um, cognitive impairment that they have got at that time. Um, and for some residents, yeah, you know, yes, they may sit there for a long period of time, um, but certainly we would then be looking for our staff to actually redirect them and say, you know, we've had a call, the bus has been delayed. Um, why don't you come and have something to eat in the dining room whilst we wait? So it's about using it as part of a therapy as opposed to just, um, you know, accept sending everybody to sit on the bus, uh, the bus stop. <laughs> Thank I love that. Thank you, Amanda. All right, I'm going to wrap up now, if that's okay, because we're, we're a little bit over time. And uh, just wanted to, just before we finish, say that on colorwired.com, which is Pamela's site, there's a number of courses that you can sign up for. So if they're, I think they really actually range from the, the core, the fundamental understanding, the fundamentals, right through to uh, much more comprehensive education that take you from really from A to B in, in a very complete way. Um, if you go to mur the mural shop online, you'll find Sharon's work, the nine different ideas, examples, you can book an assessment and, and, and much more. And uh, trudors.com, you'll see those different resources that I, I referenced earlier. I want to thank everyone for joining today. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Amanda, Pamela, Sharon. Uh, really enjoyed yeah, the awesome. session. Thank uh, you. See you all soon. Thank okay. you. Bye bye. Awesome. Thank bye, you. Bye. 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 bye.